As you've seen, we've been building amazing features to help you take advantage of advancements in mobile hardware. But we also understand that you want to maximize your player base, which means a broad range of device support and games that can scale from the low end to the high end. Unlike PC or console, building for mobile platforms requires a delicate balance. I was a game developer myself in a past life, so I get that one of the biggest challenges you face is building games that look beautiful and run smoothly, but that don't overtax the hardware. Now, this is what happens to your frame rate when your device is throttled. It's super painful to deal with and really frustrating. Today, there's a couple ways we can handle this problem. On the one hand, you can focus on just a small subset of devices at the high end. The problem with that, though, is that it really limits your audience. Instead, what most developers end up doing is pulling back on their game design, sacrificing graphics fidelity, lowering your target frame rate, reducing the scope of your game so they can still run well on low-end devices. We don't want you to have to sacrifice. We want to give you the control, not the hardware. Through thermal management, you can build games that run smoothly with sustained performance over longer periods of time. We've built adaptive performance, a new feature giving you unprecedented data about device thermal trends, including information about whether your game is CPU or GPU bound at runtime. The data this feature provides will enable you to adjust your game dynamically and proactively to best utilize the hardware. The result is decreased thermal buildup, and a more predictable frame rate, enabling a much better player experience. And we tried this out with Megacity, the massive streaming world project you may have heard of that we unveiled last year. With millions of entities built with scalability in mind, this was the ideal test bed for our new performance feature. By starting at lower CPU and GPU levels, increasing them gradually to eliminate our bottlenecks, we're able to keep energy consumption low. If we detect we're getting near a throttling state, we can adjust the game right there to stabilize the temperature. In our case, we chose to lower the level of detail. As you can see, the results are impressive, giving you the power to stabilize your frame rate over extended time. This sample was measured over 20 minutes, which is already impressive. But check this out. We started at Megacity and left it running overnight, came back in the morning, and it was still humming along, right at its target frame rate. It was amazing. <laughs> By keeping a closer eye on a device's thermal trends, we can adjust performance on the fly and, and avoid throttling altogether. With this kind of dynamic adjustment, we can find that balance between maximum quality and maximum performance on a range of devices. We're working with the world's largest Android device manufacturer to make this happen first on some of the most popular devices. Our partnership with Samsung will enable you to use adaptive performance on Galaxy devices like the new flagship Galaxy S10 and Galaxy Fold, and coming soon to many existing Samsung devices already in players' hands around the world. And this is just the beginning. We're going to continue to invest in adaptive performance, adding new features, and rolling out to even more devices this year and beyond. Thank you.